Today I'm going to share with you a couple of custom brushes that I made for the app concepts specifically for the purpose of sketch noting. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Verbal to Visual. I'm your host, Doug Neal, and my sketchnoting app of choice lately has been Concepts, an infinite canvas drawing app that is pretty intuitive and that I've really been enjoying. One of the things that I like about Concepts is that similar to apps like Procreate, you're able to create your own custom brushes. And even though one of the built-in brushes in Concepts worked pretty well for my sketchnoting needs, it wasn't quite good enough. So I decided to make my own. Here's how that went. So here I am within concepts and actually within the same project that I shared in the last video about split screen note taking. These are some of my notes from the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. And while taking those notes, I was using the dynamic pen, which can be a great place for sketch noters to start because of the pressure sensitivity of it that gives it more of a hand-drawn feel. But what I've come to realize is that the degree of pressure sensitivity is just a little bit too high. There's just too much variation in the line weight from light pressure to heavy pressure, which resulted in my writing and drawing just feeling a little sloppier than it could be. So after a quick look at some of the other brushes within the packs that I have access to because I'm using the paid version of Concepts, once I saw that none of those felt right either, I decided to create my own. Now, if you want to go into all of the customization options that you have available to you when you create a new brush, go check out the very detailed video that Concepts put out. That's what I watched before creating my own brush here. I'm gonna be focusing on just those features that felt the most helpful for sketch noters. I decided to give this pen the name of core font, leaving some room in the future for maybe a title font or a secondary font. I used the default stamp as the brush type, even though you can upload your own stamp source, which dictates the type of mark that is made. But because of what I mentioned with the dynamic pen, the main thing that I wanted to experiment with here was the pressure sensitivity. And that's where this size variation graph comes in. You've got low pressure on the left, high pressure on the right, and then you've got the percentage of your pen size going vertically there from 1% to 100%, then from 100% up to 1,000%. So based on this graph here that I started with, with a size of 12 points selected, at the lowest pressure of the Apple Pencil, that looks like about 60 or 70%, so that would maybe be 8 or 9 points for the size. Then at the highest pressure, it would reach that 100% of 12 points as the size. So I first tested that out at a 12 point size, then 8 point, then 4 point. Then I tried making that pressure variation a bit more dramatic from about 50% up to 100%, trying out some writing and drawing, writing lightly and then writing with pressure, asking myself, is that variation enough? Feeling pretty good about it, but wanting to keep testing it. So doing a bit more drawing as well to see what that feels and looks like. And for the most part, I was feeling good about this, worried that maybe it was a little too boring, but definitely liking it enough to stick with it. And I decided to hop back into the settings to play around with one more variable. So as you can see, you can create a unique size variance graph for three different variables, pressure, tilt, and velocity. I was pretty sure that I didn't want the speed of my writing or drawing to affect the size of the strokes, but I thought the tilt feature might come in handy. So I added a pretty subtle curve there, where the closer the pen is to vertical, the smaller the stroke size. And within that first test there, you can see that there's a noticeable difference when intentionally writing from that vertical position. And I found right away that I liked that, realizing that it's pretty similar to my analog experience with with permapaque markers in particular that have the type of rounded but still pointy enough tip where if you write or draw from that vertical position, you can get finer strokes than your normal handwriting and drawing that's maybe at a 45 degree angle. And while I'm not worried about kind of fully recreating the analog pen experience, I do think the closer they are, the more natural my digital sketch noting will be and the less I'll have to train my mind and brain to work differently with this different tool set. 
So here I'm playing around with some broad containers, but then finer strokes for adding some text inside them and coming to the conclusion that I think those two variables in particular are worth paying attention to if you also want to create a custom brush within your sketchnoting app. Feel free to experiment with more drastic graphs than the ones I've been using. Or if you like how these words and drawings are showing up on the screen here, feel free to copy the graphs that I used. So that was the first custom pen that I created within Concepts. But when I hopped over to a different project, this time a lesson for the new course that I'm building right now, Digital Sketchnoting, I realized that I didn't have a good highlighter. So I decided to create one. And it was really simple. After creating some equally spaced size defaults, I added in just a little bit of pressure variation. Then I played around with opacity and decided on 50% since I knew I wanted it to serve this purpose of highlighting. And then scrolled down to look at the layering options because you can actually assign this particular brush to its own layer in a way that happens automatically so that anytime you switch to it, the next marks you make will automatically go to that layer. So I renamed that layer highlighter. Then I adjusted the brush type because that reveal option gets at the highlighter feel much more than the stamp option does. And at first, since that highlighter tool was the most recently created, the layer for it actually was above the previous pen that I made, the one that right now just says custom. So I swapped those around because I wanted my highlighter marks to go underneath my core font marks. Then I went in and actually renamed that layer and turn the layer setting back to automatic so that as I switch between those two different pens, the marks automatically show up on their respective layers. And then here's how I use that combo of pens in addition to a few different colors to create the starting point for a lesson all about using digital sketchnoting as a learning tool. A lesson that I'll be presenting a few hours after I finish recording this video. So I hope that seeing my experience with some custom brushes gave you some ideas of what you might like to create for yourself and how relatively easy it is to create your own tools and adjust them over time. Because what's exciting about that prospect is that you can start to define a specific set of brushes and pens that are tied to your sketchnoting process. So that as you're capturing ideas in this visual way, you can give each of those pens a specific role in the sketchnoting process. And then with a bit of practice, the tool switching becomes much more intuitive and almost reinforces your sketchnoting process. As you switch from a title font at the beginning of each section, to your core font for all your main writing and drawing, to your highlighter when you want to emphasize an idea. It's that type of workflow that I think is an exciting goal to shoot for if you're using an app and stylus for your sketchnoting. And if that's your tool combo, then I encourage you to check out the new course that I mentioned, Digital Sketchnoting. Throughout that course, we're exploring a bunch of different apps and all of the features that are available to you and how to weave those features into your sketchnoting process. You'll get to see more of my experiments and also a lot of experiments from everyone else who's participating in that course. That's been the benefit of switching to Mighty Networks as our learning platform a few months back. There's so much more sharing going on and it's really exciting to see. So if you would like to check that out for yourself and start contributing as you learn how to best use this tool set, then check out the links below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun creating your own pens and brushes and I'll see you again in the next video. Till then.